All right guys, welcome back to CDs from Automotive and Repair. Today we have a new vehicle we arrived in the shop. It's got a little issue, a little stumble. Um, here is a 96 Chrysler Town & Country. Same thing as the Dodge Grand Caravans and uh, the Mercury or whatever you call them uh, minivans. So this has the 3.8 V6 automatic it's the two-wheel drive <clears throat> well problem is, is the vehicle came in had no um would not start up and um long story short problems was i was getting fuel pump was not getting spark so put another ignition coal on it still didn't fix the issue I traced it down all the way back to the computer the main brain 245 dollars later the van now starts, runs, drives, but now she has a stumble. She's backfiring um, upon acceleration, not really wanting to come up a hill. Um, we have some other codes too for the transmission, but we'll get to that later. Maybe not in this video, but we'll another time. All right, so today, as you can tell by the title of the video, we're going to be replacing the ignition coal. Uh, this vehicle has a problem of a misfire or check engine light came on it says po352 or po353 which leads to ignition coal primary circuit failure um, the vehicle kind of shakes it's misfiring it's not running too good um, so we went ahead and pick up the parts local parts AutoZone near me part number is c881 this was 55 dollars and change out the door tools you're going to need to replace it are extension 10 millimeter and a ratchet i'm using quarter inch in this video you can use three eighths it don't matter so there's four 10 millimeter bolts one here one here and there's one right underneath here it's kind of hard to see my fingers in the way but it's right there and then there's one right straight underneath you'll see it <clears throat> now before you take this all apart you want to make sure that you mark what places that the spark plug wires go to um, but if you get messed up and you didn't do that and you took them off and you replaced the ignition coil and it's misfiring or whatever or you got them backwards you can always look it up on Google and find the firing order but for me I already know exactly which way these go because for one one of them's got a red and then a blue so I know which way these go at the top and then whatever way that the separators is set so this is one actually it's two, four, six. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. <clears throat> so um, they're already marked in the order. So all I know is this is the first one, this one's the second one, this one's the third one for the bottom, as you can tell. One, two, three. And then at the top, you got blue in the front, red, and then this. Yours won't have these, but somebody else has put zip ties, so that's how I know which ones these go in order. All right. All right, we got it out of the box. It's brand new, never been used. 10 millimeter and we'll start taking this apart there is a small connector right underneath if you take your finger on this side pull it outward it's a little clip pull it outward and pull back on the connector so pull out wiggle it and it should come out just like that there's the little lip I was telling you about you pull outward this way and then pull it out Really don't matter. And you don't have to worry about the screws being different sizes. They're all the same size. So you don't have to worry about keeping up with them. All right, so you ratchet down. All right, so I've got a bird in my gut. Well, never mind. Lay that bad boy up here. Well, I just dropped my 10 millimeter again. <laughs> picked one of these up at uh, Dollar Tree, and uh, so far it's been pretty good. It actually picked up that whole thing, and uh, pretty shocked about that. I mean, it extends pretty long. That's uh, not bad for a dollar, if you're asking me. All right, so now you got them off, and if you've marked your wires or whatever, then take them off. They just pop right off. You can pop them back onto the new one. I will say, <clears throat> I don't have anything with me, but 
I would take some um, spark plug stuff. It's a certain name for it. Just can't think of it right now at the moment. And put it inside of here in order for uh, it doesn't get stuck or cause corrosion or whatever gets in here. That way it keeps the moisture out and it doesn't rust and you'll have a misfire. So make sure they're the same, which they are. This is a little different and that's probably because this is original to the van. The van has 225,000 miles, so it's seen better days. So we'll go ahead and slap this bad boy back on. First of all, we'll go ahead and screw her back on and um, then we'll put the plugs and wires and everything else back on together. One thing you want to note <clears throat> before this one goes in, if you got the spark plug separator that needs to go on first, then it can go in and tighten them down. You don't need to over tighten these, you just need to get them snug like that and it's pretty much good you don't need to over tighten you can strip them and these are very easy to strip or snap off so just snug them up and that should be good enough all right so i knew this one went here because it's odd shaped and funny red went in the middle just like so that should have went on top like that blue one went on the end clicks in all right, so remember, first one right here, second one, middle, third one, last. Just like I said, they all clicked in like they're supposed to. <sighs> Make sure they're in the right place back here on the separators. And then we'll take our connector and uh, plug that bad boy back in down here. Alright, all right, so everything's back in. Got all your wires, ignition coils tightened down. We'll go ahead and fire it up and see how she runs. Man, oh man, is it hot as like Hades out here. God. Whew. Mm. 225,000 miles. Fires right up. Sounds healthy, other than that little bitty bearing noise in here down there. I think the water pump's going bad on this vehicle. It's located right down here. You can't really see it though. That's what that noise is. Yep. No more stumble whenever you hit the gas pedal. So uh, I think I'd call that pretty much fixed. Alright, so if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, criticisms, leave them in the bottom. I'll try my best to get to them. And if you had not already, smash the heck out of that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more. I make how-to repair videos just about every other week, whenever possible, whenever I can. Thanks, guys. Stay tuned for more.